Well, I do not watch much television and do not think I spent the last five months just watching TV. However, this past uh, week I did take one evening off and I watched some television. And I stumbled upon the reruns of Third Rock from the Sun. How many of you remember that show? It was the late 90s, early 2000s. It was uh, four aliens from another planet who came to Earth, and they wanted to see what life was like on Earth. And we had the high commander, Dick Solomon, professor of mathematics on his earthly life, Harry, Sally, and Tommy. And the particular episode I saw was a very interesting episode. Dick, of course, was dating one of the other professors, who is a descendant of the Mayflower, and Dick decided that he wanted to become a citizen of the United States. And so he went to apply for citizenship, and he took the test, which he failed. And uh, the rest of the episode, you saw him, first of all, in the classroom, ask his college students to stand to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, and they did that rather half-heartedly. And you saw him ask questions of lifelong citizens of the U.S. who also could not answer the questions from the test. And uh, at the end, they kind of have their little philosophical moments sitting on the roof of the porch, I think it is. And uh, he was reflecting how uh, people will recite the Pledge of Allegiance and be lifelong citizens, but not really understand the meaning of the words of that pledge, and not really understand the meaning of citizenship. Well, I took that in to Advent and thought, are we maybe kind of the same way? You know, after the homily, will profess our faith and we say those words over and over every single Sunday we profess our faith and uh, part of that profession of faith is alluded to in the scripture today we hear very clearly every week in the creed that he will come in his glory to judge the living and the dead do we really understand what that means? And we hear about it in the scripture, and it's really one of the central themes of Advent. Advent not calling us so much to be prepared for December 25th, but rather to be ready for that unknown day and hour when Jesus will judge us, judge the living and the dead. Do we really understand this? And sometimes I am convinced we do, and sometimes I'm convinced we don't. In 26 years, I've had many, many funerals, and as the years mount up, it seems that uh, everyone immediately goes to heaven. That's at least a, a common thread as I celebrate funerals. We have this idea that everyone immediately goes to heaven. And if we really have that immediate idea, then maybe we don't understand the whole meaning of judgment and Jesus coming in glory to judge the living and the dead. And here at St. Greg's, we don't have the issue because there's just so many of us. But um, in most parishes of the diocese, these last few years, priests no longer have intentions to celebrate Mass. Now, in the old days, if you were in a small little country parish or a larger parish, you had to wait two, three years before you could get a mass intention, you know. If you went with those envelopes from the funeral parlor after your loved one died, uh, so many people were having masses offered for their loved ones, and today not so much the case. We regularly get calls here at St. Greg's for mass intentions, and uh, most of our All Souls Day intentions and Mother's Day Novena, Father's Day Novena mass intentions we send to other parishes for priests who do not have mass intentions to, to celebrate those masses for us. Perhaps an indicator that we do not really 
understand the meaning that Jesus will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The meaning of celebrating Mass for our loved ones who have died is to assist them through the celebration of the Mass, our prayer, to be in that full peace and presence with God if they are not already there. Maybe we are a little like Dr. Solomon's experience of the United States that uh, maybe we don't fully understand the meaning of all of what we profess in that creed. Who started baking for Christmas? Anyone? Anyone start baking for Christmas? No? Well, uh, I, I'm not a baker. And uh, if I ever bake something and offer it to you to try, do not eat it. It uh, <laughs> will not turn out very good, I assure you. And uh, I remember a story, I maybe shared it with you at this Mass, I don't know, I've shared it in many forms, when my, my grandmother, my father's mother, was teaching my mother, her daughter-in-law, how to make krushchiki. Who knows what krushchiki? You know, the little bow ties, deep fried dough, huh? And Babcha only spoke in Polish. And uh, I remember sitting watching Babchi teach my mother how to make them. And she was a real baker because she had no recipe. She just grabbed all kinds of things, mixed it together, and boom, it was done. And there was my mother taking copious notes, trying to figure out how much flour really fit into that hand, <laughs> you know, and uh, how much oil, how much you know, salt, how much all of these ingredients were, how, how much of it really fit into those fingers and, 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 and how much got mixed up into the dough. And uh, so Babcha made the krushchiki and she was a master at them. They were fabulous. And my mother then heard my grandmother tell her, you try. So my mother is following her recipe that she wrote down to the best of her ability and uh, as uh, the dough was ready, I remember her calling Babcha over, and Babcha just came and touched it. And she said, of course, it was all in Polish, it's not right. And my mother said, well, what's wrong? And my grandmother said, it doesn't feel right. And my mother said, well, what is it supposed to feel like? And Babcha said, not that. <laughs> the ingredients are important if you bake, huh? And if you talk to bakers, real bakers, sometimes maybe you'll agree with me, those of us who are a little older, how many of you think that the Plotzeks, the fruitcakes, yes, I do eat fruitcake, the fruitcakes and the cookies don't taste the same today like they did 50, 60 years ago, huh? They just don't taste the same. And if you talk to the real bakers, they're going to tell you there's probably two reasons. One is just the, the quality and the ingredients have changed. That the flour, the butter, it's just not the same that it was 50 years ago. The, the quality of these ingredients are not the same. And they said, secondly, you know, people have started swapping out ingredients for other ingredients. And as soon as you start doing that, you're going to change the entire taste of the cake or the cookie. It just doesn't work that way. Well, if you take those basic ingredients, and we can all agree that basic ingredients have to come together for the, the cookie, the cake, to come out right, take that to the readings today and to the season that we're in. We're given a very basic recipe to celebrate the season of Advent. The prophet Jeremiah is giving us the context not only for the first coming of Christ, born in place and time in Bethlehem, but ultimately also the second coming of Christ, the end of time when he will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. And Paul's letter gives us the second ingredient. The first ingredient is that sense of Christ's coming, redemption, and judgment. Second ingredient, what does Paul tell us? Conduct yourself in a way that's pleasing to God. Second ingredient, live in the, the discipleship. Conduct yourself in a way pleasing to God. Strengthen your heart to do so. And then we hear in the gospel, what? The third ingredient, be vigilant and pray. Do not give way to carousing and drunkenness. Hopefully not too many of us have that, those vices. 
But the third one, probably all of us struggle with, don't give way to anxieties of this life. And how often do we become overburdened with the concerns of daily life and we allow these anxieties to eclipse really living the life of discipleship, huh? So as we begin Advent, a simple recipe. Focus on the second coming of Christ. Be vigilant and pray to conduct yourself in word and action in a way as a disciple of Christ. And do not become overburdened with many anxieties that will eclipse the ability to follow Christ. And maybe we spend this Advent simply reflecting on how well we're doing in following these basic ingredients to the recipe of discipleship.